Okay, so I've just put a video up without natural gas in it and everyone's moaning about it already. So let's just do natural gas and have a look at what's going on. I don't have any trade positions on natural gas at the moment. I'm waiting for us to reach either 315 or 320 or a little bit lower down at 250, 260, 270. Let's start with a daily chart. I'm just gonna take a few minutes to do this. This is the daily chart. Now we've got the channel top above us at around 320, and we've got the channel bottom below us at about 260. That's pretty clear and pretty well defined. It's a beautiful channel. And right now we're slap in the middle of this channel. We have broken above this 285 level, which is denoted by this red line. It's a very, very key level. And we've broken above it and held above it, but we've left a gap behind. Now, this is a rollover gap. It's not a trading gap or a weekend gap. It's a contract rollover gap. So I suppose technically speaking, it's not actually a gap, but it does mean that there is very little trading going on in this area during this time. There is residual volume from previous trades and previous positions and people still holding positions all over the show at the 285 level, which is where the gap is. So we gapped between 266 and let's call it 286, a 20 cent gap. And we're holding right up above at around about the $3 level. Now, there are two things that could happen. Remembering that we're in the middle of the channel now, we are at the top. It's the third time we've reached the $3 level this year, once in March, actually February, once in August. And now we haven't quite touched it, but we're pretty close. I think we got to, we actually did touch $3 a few days ago, two or three days ago. So that's where we are at the moment. Now it looks like we're at the top, but we're not. The, the top is at the top of the channel and the bottom is at the bottom of the channel. We've got the 250 level or this red zone or this, well, the green zone, the start of this green zone, which is the division between the bullish and the bearish sort of overall nature of this market, which I've been pointing out for a long time. Now, we've been long most of the time. I'm not long currently because we took profits at around about this move now, and I'm not actually willing to add more longs because I don't know if we're going to get through $3 and reach up to 320 or if we're going to come back and close this gap below us between 266 and 286, somewhere around there, and get back down towards the bottom of this channel. I don't know what's going to happen next. And because we're in the middle of the channel, yes, we're at the top of the range, but in the middle of the channel. And I think that this $3.20 level, 315, is now probably more important than the $3 level, as is the 285 level, which we've now managed to conquer, which is really important and good news for the overall bullish outlook. So this level here, this 285, 86 level became the most important level. We've now convincingly closed above it by virtue of a contract rollover gap. So that's where we are at the moment. And I think my strategy is to wait for us to reach the top of the channel and look to sell at around 320, maybe 315, maybe 325, somewhere up here, depending on how long it takes to get there. Or I'll be looking to buy further down towards the bottom of this channel at around 260, maybe even 250. And I doubt it, but it is still possible that we break the 250 level and pull back into this void beneath us between $2 and 250, which was left behind a long time ago now. We have to go back to June this year before we see a price trading and closing within this sort of void gray zone between 250 and $2. So I don't think we're going to get there, but I think we may try and test 250 or 260 again, or at least the bottom of this channel, depending on how long it takes to get there. Now, we're moving into the fall season. Demand will drop off. Storage levels will increase. There'll be preparation for the winter. And uh, people in Europe might be experiencing an early winter, according to the weather forecasters. So there may be some stocking up in Europe and as a result, some import of LNG from the US because there's quite a lot of US gas now being exported around 12% to places like Europe and Japan. And then we've got the whole conflict in Ukraine and the way that's affected the natural gas price and things like wheat as well. Wheat dropping through the floor, surprisingly, and surprising that natural gas hasn't rallied further. But this doesn't seem to be putting any pressure on international prices for gas and wheat and a couple of other commodities as well. So I think we can take that out of the picture somewhat, apart from it being a lingering and lurking risk in the background, which we always have to keep in mind. So that's the overall strategy on gas. I'm waiting for 315, 320 to sell, or perhaps down to about 260, 250 to purchase. In the meantime, we're diddling in the middle, no trades on for me at the moment. I've got other fish to fry, other markets to focus on. Have a look at the video that I've linked at the end of this one. Have a look at my views on stocks and oil and metals and some of the Forex pairs. Have a great trading day. I'll speak to you soon.